So you like dragging images to your model, but you don't understand this menu. Not a problem. Real quick, last tutorial I showed you how to drag in normals, but you can really drag anything in. If it's a color map, just set it to color. If it's a height map, set it to height. It doesn't have to be normals, just drag whatever you want. This grid is called the projection manipulator, and it allows you to drag your design wherever you want. It will default to surface, which means that it's sensitive to the topology and will automatically orient itself to hug the surface. You can turn the manipulator off by clicking this button. If you change mode to scale, you'll be able to change the X, Y, Z, and overall size of the design. You you can also click and drag combinations of X, Y, and Z by clicking on these frames separately. If you change mode to rotation, you'll be able to rotate the design along the X, Y, and Z axis, or click the middle for freehand rotation. And the translate tool lets you adjust position. As usual, you can also slide along the X, Y, and Z axis, or click the middle for freehand control. Normally it defaults to object space, which means the manipulator is centered around the design. However, if you click here, you can change the manipulator to function around the global world space instead. This is useful when you want things to be parallel or flat to the floor or perfectly aligned with the front. You can mirror or design horizontally with this or mirror it vertically with this. The size of the grid controls can be changed in the manipulator settings. Grid and angle steps affects your ability to snap to certain degrees when you hold down shift. For example, if you set angle to 20, if you're in the rotate manipulator and you start to rotate an axis and hold shift, it will snap every 20 degrees. Likewise, depending on what value you've set for grid steps, when you're in the position manipulator and you grab an axis and hold shift, it will snap depending on the value you've chosen. The larger this value, the bigger the jumps it'll make as you snap. You can warp the shape of your design by clicking here, and if you switch modes, you can edit the vertices like this. If you want more vertices to control, you can go back up and click split cross, which will allow you to create new vertices horizontally and vertically, which you can now drag around. If you only want to create new vertices horizontally though, you can do that like this, or if you want to do the same thing vertically, you can do it like this. While you are editing vertices, this button makes sure that your designs stay perpendicular to the surface of your object. If you turn it off, you'll notice the designs will start to to go through the object and stop following the surface. If you mess things up, you can reset all the vertices by going over here, or you can just reset the selected vertices with this. Or if you just want to move the design to the middle of the world stretched, you can reset the whole thing globally like this. If you want to change the basic settings of the grid, you can do that here. You can change the overall number of rows, or unlock this box and make a custom row and column pattern like this. Handle size just makes the vertices themselves bigger and easier to grab. You can change the color of the grid over here, and these green arrows over here are called normals. Any geometry that goes within the volume of arrows is where the texture is going to get applied. So if we take a look at this example, on the right under properties, if we change projection depth, you can see the longer the arrows get, the deeper the normals are projected through the mesh. And you can also change things like hardness over here. If you don't want to see the normals, just uncheck this box. Hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fan fantastic day and I'll see you around.